Hey, welcome back to the episode of Jay's Speed Shop. Uh, today we got the Trans Am, uh, 93 Trans Am in the, uh, in the garage. It's always in the garage for something right now. Still trying to work out the bugs. Um, so for those who haven't seen any of the other videos, this is a 93 Trans Am that has an LS1 swap done to it. Um, we just got it going last fall and then kind of it's been working the bugs out this summer. So one of the issues we've been having is, um, randomly just won't start. And you turn the key and you can hear it, the solenoid click down at the starter, um, but it doesn't turn over, um, doesn't even try. And so I've gone through a couple starters thinking that was the problem, um, you know, because I originally put uh, a rebuilt starter from O'Reilly's in there. And uh, I will say that it seems like the better starter seems to have been better. I end up upgrading to like a brand new like Bosch unit, and I think that's what's in it now. But I've gone through a couple of starters. And last week I replaced the battery thinking, well, maybe the battery's just got something wrong with it. I mean, it seemed to be seemed to be fine. Um and so today we're gonna start replacing the battery cables. And as I've just done some research on this issue, that's one of the things that commonly seems to be an issue. These are the original cables from the 2000 LS1 Camaro that was a donor car for this. Um I reused them. I know when I was putting these, uh, putting the engine in, I had thought about replacing those. I don't remember why I thought about that, if it was because I saw some corrosion. But when I went to look up the replacement parts on uh, the uh, um, Rock Auto website the other day, as soon as I saw them, I'm like, oh, I've looked this up before. I've recognized these pictures. And so it makes me think I saw something. And my think thinking is that it's, it's just – Kind of sometimes it gets enough voltage to the starter and sometimes it doesn't um, based on the condition of what's inside the wire. So anyways, they're 15, 20 bucks. We'll go ahead and throw a new set on. It was like, like 15 or 20 bucks each for the new ones. Um, I'll kind of show you what those look like. And uh should be a fairly easy job. We're going to put new spark plug wires on it while we got it in here too. Those are original like 2000 spark plug wires. So I figured... Um, one kept falling off. Like we've, it, the car started backfiring a couple times, and the one I'm not sure if it, and it's just in a spot where it's hard to get it on. And I'm just not sure if it's just if it's still something wrong with the wire itself that's not staying on, or if it's just because I didn't have it on there good enough. But um, thought you know, well, you probably should put new wires on it anyway since they're uh, they're getting fairly old. So these are the new sparkle or new sparklers, the new uh, battery cables. So they are basically identical to the factory ones. Um, they're not the thickest things in the world, but they're four gauge, good enough. It doesn't have a very long run. Um, the only thing we'll have to modify is so on your on your ground you have the uh, this ground goes to the uh, body, and then the other end goes to the uh, someplace on the block. That's actually yeah. Well, that's the other one. Yeah, so the other one goes down to the block, and then on the hot cable, one goes down to the starter. One goes over to like a, I'll call it a, just a block that then distributes power out to different other accessories. And then you got your longer one that runs over to the alternator. Um, so I'm sure I have to probably, I don't know, I can't remember if all these wires are in uh, some kind of covering or not. So I'll probably end up, end up cutting some zip ties and things like that, but shouldn't be too big of a deal. Uh, but all that was going to say, the one wire that runs over to the, uh, accessories is too long so that one is a uh because on the 2000 vehicle i'll show you on the car the uh the motors out with 2000 this vehicle is 93 so this accessory spot here and again just you you draw you can, it goes from the battery over to here and then it jumpers over to some other accessories that i think on the 2000s is on the driver's side um wheel well because the wire the the wire is cable is way too long um so i had to when i did this one when i put installed it in the car with the old one i had to put a new end on it um so we'll have to do that again cut this cut it down and put a new end on this length is about perfect so we'll just do the same thing again um i'll get the old one out and then we'll uh we'll kind of figure out how to shorten the new one and then run the uh install the new one so up here the first thing we're going to do um just I'll show you real quick. I'm not gonna record, but we're just gonna disconnect the battery cables off the battery, um, and then we'll disconnect the uh, hot wire here, and we'll disconnect 
the ground body ground right there. And then we will, from there, we will, uh, the other thing I'm going to do while I have that off is I'm going to make sure that this body ground's got a really good contact to that. There's no paint under there or anything. I don't think that there is, but I think I did that already, but just to make sure we got a really good ground there. And then, uh, once then, after we do that, we'll put the car up on the hoist and then we'll have to disconnect from the uh, starter uh, from the uh, for the hot and from the alternator for the hot. Um, starter is easy to get to. I might have to drop the starter out to do it, but it's it's that's fairly easy. I've had I've done it enough times now. I'm pretty good at that. It drops right out. Um, alternator is buried down there under the power steering. Um, I don't remember how easy it is to get to that off the back. I think it had it all hooked up. The harness all hooked up to it before I dropped it in to the car. So I don't know exactly how easy that'll be to connect, get my hands up in there. And then the spark plug wires, when we go to do those, um, oh yeah, we had the ground wire on the uh, passenger side that's got to connect to the block. I think that's fairly easy to get to as well. Spark plug wires should be pretty easy on this side. Um, driver's side is a little tougher uh, just because of the AC lines and stuff here. Um, the back one, I don't think I can get the wire on the spark plug from up here. I'm hoping I can get to it from the, from the underside. Um, if I can get my hand past the headers, then I'll better get to it there. So that's kind of the plan. We'll kind of get started here this evening and then, uh, kind of finish it, finish it up a couple evenings this week to get it done. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do, it's a eight millimeter with battery cable. Negative off, get a positive off. It's both of the cables there, and then uh, it's a 10 millimeter to get to this. That one off, let's do that loose. Put that back on there now, and then get a negative off of there. We'll uh, clean up all these uh, ground wires real good before I put this back together. I mean, that's, nothing's really corroded or anything. Just make sure you got really good clean contact points. So now we've got both our cables loose on this end. And uh, I think that's all we can do from up here. The next step will be to get the car up in the air. Or, you know, if you don't, can't get it up in the air, you just got to get under there. And... Uh, get to the starter alternator in the ground on the other side and uh, at that point should uh, should come apart pretty easily. Like I said, it's just a matter of being able to get to everything, get your hands up in this car. It's got fairly fairly tight in this compartment. It's, it's not bad for uh, some things, but getting down there, uh, like I said, the, probably the biggest one I think is going to be the alternator uh, getting up to that one, but we'll see once we get up in there, I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so we got it up in the air and uh, take a look here and see what we got going on. So there's the alternator. So, okay, actually, it's not too bad. It's right, uh, it's hard to see, but right up here where my finger is, is the boot for that wire. So it's not too bad. And that one just runs across, it clips into the fans. Clips in here to the fan and it runs up. So that should be pretty easy to get the positive out on that end. And then coming back here, there's the starter. So we'll have to, this, yeah, this, the starter wires are up on top. So we'll have to drop the starter down, which is, which is easy. And then I think once the starter is dropped down, I believe the ground wire comes down here is connected to the block right behind uh, up above the starter somewhere. 
if I recall. So I don't think that'll be too bad. Um, spoke bug wire wise. Let's see here. There you can kind of see that. Uh, hopefully, yeah, right there. You can kind of see that last spark plug wire. It's got the factory metal style boot covers. I don't know that I'll reuse those. I don't know if they're actually even reusable. Um, but that's uh, that last one might be uh, a little bit of a challenge, but I think I can get my arm up there. Let's see. Oh, maybe not. <laughs> That'll be interesting because my arm <laughs> gotta watch that's a very sharp edge too. My arm uh, just barely can get up there and get my fingertips on that spark plug wire, so might be interesting trying to get that one on. The next one up in front of that, I think I can get to pretty easily with the uh, starter out. In fact, actually that back one, once the starter is out. I might be able to get to that one easier too because I'll better go straight up here. Maybe. We'll see. Might give me another option. Because this way I can, I mean, I could probably pull it off. I can get my, my arm in there almost up to my elbow. I can get my fingers on it. I'm sure I cannot catch any of this on the camera. It's too dark up here, but. I'll bring in some light so you can see a little bit better. Okay, so we got the alternator wire off. Um, wasn't too bad to get to. You can get right to the back of it there. You can kind of see the stud right back here. My fingers pointing. Uh, so I was able to get on there with a 13 millimeter socket. Um, this had to pop these two clips. Hold it up, the the wire up, and then that's right up to the battery cables. That one's loose. So now we got to get the starter out. Um, I said, as I showed you yesterday, I disconnected up at the top side. Um, so we'll show you how to how we're gonna pull the starter out here real quick. Okay, so you can kind of look up there and see what we're doing. So first of all, I've got uh, the stainless steel braided uh, trans cooler lines. And so I had made this little bracket to kind of support those. That's just has a little weld nut at the top, on the top of the bracket. I'll take that off, take a little bracket off. And this just allows these to kind of flex out of the way. So when you drop the starter out, and the starter is just two 13 millimeter volts as well. One starter bolt. So, grab a couple smaller wrenches. I'm not sure what size the, uh, the smaller wire is on the back of the starter. But. So these Ellis's are pretty easy to change the starters on. Pretty easy access. Just the two bolts out. Got pivot. This star is a slightly different design. It's actually a little. I'll show you the difference. It's a little tougher to get out than the factory one was. So there's just one slight difference in, in the design that makes it so. All right, so starter's dropped. What I'll do is I'll pull off my uh, heat shield. And this is what makes it a little bit different. The factory starter on these, come on, so this is in the camera, yeah. The, this boss is short. It ends like up here. It has a short screw. So it's a little tougher because you have to look past up between the starter and the block to get the, to get the bolt in. But this longer boss makes it a little bit tougher to wiggle it out. Not, not a big deal, but 
takes a doesn't go into place quite as smoothly as the other one did. Pretty small little screw, and there's a lock or small little bolt. There's a lock washer on there as well. So you just want to make sure that. Uh, Don't lose the bolt or the lock washer as this comes apart. And I said because I did lose them last time and I had to well, I've install this other up to the hardware store and try and find new ones that would work. Now we'll say these new uh, Delco, and these are Delco replacements, do not have the same style. Fittings on the end, so it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. Because if you can see here, this one's got an angled fitting on it and it's got this little piece here the tab that hangs on to keep it from spinning while you're tightening it down the new one looks more like just like a standard cable end, and it's not angled so it's gonna be interesting to see how this all plays out if I have to bend those new ones or if I can make it work but come a bummer doesn't have the factory style I don't care from the aesthetic standpoint I just I want it to work like the factory style one did. I mentioned before, I was hoping I could get to this spark plug. Kinda, but I really can't get my hand between the block and the headers too well here. I mean, kind of get my fingers on it, but. Not a real good grip, so those will be fun to get those changed. Okay, so now we have the cable, this piece disconnected. And I don't think, don't forget how I routed this thing. Routed. If I zip tied it to anything along the way, I probably did. Maybe not. So there is one. Bought one of these. Uh, zip tied it has a little tab on it that uh, holds it to a metal bracket about half, almost just under the battery. So I have to pop that out and transfer that over to the new one. But I think our positive cable is now disconnected. Just a matter of feeding it up, up through there. Okay, I'm going to work on getting that plastic clip off, and then i got to try and find... Where the ground wire connects to the block. Oh, there I see it. Okay, yeah, so that's easy to get to now. Looks like a 14 or 15 millimeter bolt there. So we'll get that loose and then uh, should be able to pull the negative cable out too. So you can hear see where the ground strap bolts to the block. So we're going to take that out, I believe, probably a 14 or 15, yeah, 15 millimeter. So we'll get that one out. Okay, so you can see the, uh, got the factory cables out. And you can see what I was talking about on like the, uh, uh, this one's got that style of end, and the new cables are just like this flat end. So I actually have to cut one of these off, so I may practice this to see if those will bend to get this 90-degree look because that would make it uh, easier to get on the back of the starter and on, on, up behind the wrap that I'm using. Um, so what I'll do is I'll end up removing this covering, protective covering, um, this has some wrap on it. I've got some newer stuff I can use to for a heat shield off the header. Um, basically, it's the way this is set up is that the positive and the negative are both kind of run through 
uh, go on this side, going down to the uh, uh, going down to the starter into the block. So we'll just kind of duplicate this with all the uh, the shielding we've got on here. We we'll use what we can. Most of it's fine. Um, and then, uh, like I said, the one thing I'll have to do is I have to shorten one arm. Uh, you can see it did this one last time. We shortened that arm uh, that goes over to the, I call it the fuse block. It's not really a fuse block, but the little, um, I don't know what they call it, but where one hot comes in, a bunch of hots go off of there. So the uh, distribution terminal, I guess. And so we'll have to shorten one of these. I'll have to figure out which one's the right length for the starter, and then I'll shorten the other one. Okay, so we made our shortened uh, cable, and this is the one that goes over to the, uh, I guess we'll call it transfer terminal up on the, on the uh, wheel well. And what I did is I just cut the old piece of the wire off, whatever I didn't need. Um, got a uh, one of these copper copper fittings. This is for a four gauge wire, which is what this is. And then the way I installed it, I forgot the video, but got this kind of cool thing. It's always hard to try and get these things where they fit uh, tight and how to crimp it off. You know the right tool. So this is a uh, it was maybe 20 bucks off of Amazon. You put the uh, fitting in there, you stick your cable in and wire in, and then you take, you just whack this thing. This is spring loaded. You whack that, and what it does then is it, uh, I can show you one that I did that uh, doesn't have any heat shrink on it. It was a practice one I did the other day. Um, is it puts this nice dimple in. I had to do it on both sides, but it kind of puts a nice dimple in that, uh, which I may have actually tried to do that three times, but <clears throat> when I did this one, I did once on the front, once on the back, actually twice on each side, just to get it right. And this put a piece of shrink tube over it, heated that up so it sealed it up good, and uh, our positive cable is ready to go. And I also bent. Just stuck this end in the vise and bent that 90 degrees. I practiced on the, actually, the end I cut off of here, I practiced on that just to make sure it wouldn't damage this fitting or anything in the process. And uh, so we should be good to go now. And uh, we'll put this on the uh, uh, back in the car. So while we're working on the uh, installing the uh, new uh, battery cables, throwing the new spark plugs on to, our spark plug wires on to. Um, so with some MSDs. The uh, this side goes on real easy, really easy to get to. The other side a little bit more difficult. The, the reason I'm doing it now is because when I have the car up on the hoist, while I'm uh, connecting the uh, battery cables, I can get to that rear spark plug wire on the passenger side. That would I think will be difficult to get to from the top. Okay, so we're gonna start installing the battery cables. I got the three spark plug wires on this side that I needed to get from uh, up top. Uh, first three weren't too bad. The, Fourth one, I can't really get my fingers on, so I'm going to hopefully get all that from the bottom. Um, I need to clean up. I'm going to start installing the cables. I got the uh, negative cable kind of sitting in here, and I uh, I installed, I pulled the stud out of the fender and just cleaned up the underside to make sure it was nice, clean metal on metal contact. Clean out the top, kind of clean up all these connectors so that we can lay the. Uh, All of our uh, wires on here, <clears throat> put our uh, nut back on, and so we should have a good, uh, nice, solid ground contact up here. Let's see where this wire kind of wants to lay. Kind of like that. Some millimeter bolts. Make all the wires. I want to make sure side is not in the screen. It's going to have to look at the other one. That's good. That's our 
negative wire. <clears throat> This one's got a few more pieces and parts here. So this one's going to go up to our uh, red terminal box there. This one's going to go down. The red, same place we ran the negative. Let's get it. It's just hanging down there for now. And then, we'll, and then this one's going to, this one. Is the one that goes over to the alternator, so we're now just kind of run it. Yeah, it's going to go under this ABC line. Up it under the radiator hose. And this one uh, connects to the uh, electric fans or the fan shroud with electric fans. There's a couple of clips that holds this one in place. Okay, it's down good. This is going to go right there. So let's get these connected first. That way, that when I, as I'm underneath the car, I don't pull the wires down too far from where they need to be. So we're good there. This reaches our battery. Negative cables, good. And now I just need to get the car back up in the air. And probably the hardest part is getting that last spark plug wire off because it's just tight to get to from any direction. But at least we got uh, the connections up here. So I'll connect up to the alternator um, on the positive side. And then to the back of the starter, reinstall the starter and uh, connect the ground to the block. Actually, connecting the ground block to the block needs to come before the starter goes in. Because when the star is out, it kind of gives you good access up there, and then uh, and then it will uh, be probably before we put the star, we'll do the spark plug wire as well, because I might be able to get to it that direction as well. Okay, so we reattached the alternator uh, wire to the back of the alternator, and that runs here, clips back in to the uh, two different clips on the fan shroud, and then obviously goes up there to the uh, battery. And then uh, from here, we're just going to work on uh, probably get that rear uh, rear spark plug wire. You can kind of see it up there. Try to get that one off. It is going to be tight for me, the direction. And unfortunately, all the shielding is kind of sharp, so it's going to be a challenge to get up there and get that on there. It also looks like the spark plug over here, this Third one does not look like it's on all the way compared to the other, so I probably need to try and get that down a little bit tighter too. So I got that uh, last spark plug wire on. wasn't too bad from the bottom. I, well, I should say I have it on the spark plug. I don't have it on the coil. I cannot physically get my arm up high enough 
uh, under here without loosening up the headers uh, to get the, on the coil. So I'm hoping I'm going to get my fingers on it from the top. So we'll do that probably real quick before we put the starter back in. So we've got the, uh, the ground back on the side of the block. And now we're gonna, I'm going to drop down so I can get the top spark plug wire before I put the starter in and lose this access down here. Okay, we got that last plug wire on the coil on the top. I think I got it on there good. It's, I really had a hard time getting my fingers on it, but um, we'll, uh, we'll see. Hopefully it stays on. So now we're going to pop the starter in real quick, and then uh, I think this is done. First thing we need to do is get our wires on. So it's small wire to the solenoid. Probably a hard one to get on this because it's not so small. There we go. Good and tight, and then we're gonna get our main battery cable on. And we both these have lock washers. This is our new battery cable. Lock washer. Millimeter. Oh, good. Oh, they're good, except that I <laughs> didn't have it around my transmission line, so I need to undo that one real quick and do that. Showing you my mistakes. Wash off cable. Make sure this wires up over top of the transmission lines. So if not, we run into an issue. I go put this back together. I put the starter in. Again, we're gonna put our uh, lock washer on. Put the nut back on. Now what we do is just kind of tuck the starter back up. Get these cables all the way. Transition line all the way. Feed it back up there so you can get the snout up where it needs to go. You know what? And we forgot to do one thing. We got we got our heat shield. We need to wrap around this. We have this one on there, but I had to install the second one. Slide this back up in there again. Get the snout lined up. Get our uh, bolts started. Get that so two things, well, three things left to do after this. I got to put the uh, this bracket back on for the transmission lines. And then there was a spot where the battery cable, and then remember they were both in one piece of the, uh, what you call it, corrugated plastic. Uh, the new cables are a little bit thicker. I don't know if the gauge of the wire is any thicker, but at least the outside diameter is thicker. And hopefully the inside the diameter is the wire is thicker, and that's why. That would be better. Um, Oh, 
And then, uh, so just below the, uh, a little evaporator, uh, the aluminum thing for the air conditioning. It was a little, uh, tie down here. So we'll, uh, go over here and try and get this connected, but basically I'll show you. Right up there where those battery cables come down above the transmission lines. I disconnected this AC line so I could get those wires. There's a spot for like a little clip to go, and it was made to hold a single corrugated, only, and I call them corrugated, but whatever these uh, wire looms are. And uh, it was made to hold one, so I'm going to put this one that's got like a zip tie and try and tie them both down just so they're not moving around. And then... Uh, and then we'll plug the AC back in, and I got one little piece I took off off the uh, coil packs just so I can get my uh, there's a little pointy bolt that I took off so I can get my arm through there. So we'll take that off, and we should be done. Probably a little bit hard to see, but kind of right in this on this bracket. There's a uh, yeah, it's hard to get on video, but anyways, there was one uh, clip that clips into that bracket under that holds this piece of the air conditioning on there. And uh, so I d it used uh, one of those connectors that goes into, a, snaps into a hole and it has a zip tie to zip around the cables. Just kind of keeps them from falling down or uh, rubbing on something they're not supposed to. So I think all we got left to do is hook up our battery cables up here and uh, we should be good to go.